Well, in Russia, the jailed opposition leader Alexei Navalny has called on people to take to the streets to protest against the war with Ukraine, telling them that Putin is not Russia. Well, earlier I spoke to former Russian MP and diplomat Natalia Narochnitskaya. I asked her how appalled she was by what she was witnessing in Ukraine right now. Huh. I'm much more uh, surprised how the West could totally ignore the killing murder of Russian people in Donetsk that was going on in eight years. I know uh, no matter what I say, you will be on the side of Ukrainians uh, saying that Russians are murderers, etc. But the, because the information picture on your TV is totally different from the information picture on our TV. That's why it's a conversation that, between That may people. very well be the case, Natalia. Maybe, maybe you're not seeing the full picture in Russia. But as a, as a mother, perhaps a grandmother, I just ask you, do you have any sympathy when six-year-old girls are killed by shells? Oh, I do have great sympathy because I'm a mother and I'm a grandmother. And, of course, I take the whole situation as a drama. Do you know how much suppressed were Russian people in Donetsk? Because their only fault mm. was that they wanted to stay what they are, to continue to mm. identify themselves in Russian okay. language, continue right. that they were forbidden Natalia, that. And they declared autonomy. Natalia, and that's why they started Natalia, being let's not, let's not talk about. Let's not talk about Donetsk. I just, let me ask you this very simply. Um, are there Ukrainian tanks in Moscow right now or St. Petersburg shelling Russian civilians? Yes or no? No, in Moscow, no. No, no but in is Donetsk, the yes. But no, in, exactly. in Donetsk, yes. But there in are Donetsk, Russian. Yes. But there are, forget Donetsk for a minute, but there are Russian tanks how, how can I shelling Ukrainian every... civilians in Kyiv. You keep talking about the past. Let's talk about the present, Keith. the here and now. There is an army of 190,000 soldiers and hundreds of tanks and artillery and helicopter gunships and cruise missiles and the whole box of military tricks descending on a country that I'm afraid to say does not want you here. Whether you like it or not, they don't want to be liberated or denazified or whatever you want to call it by your soldiers. Ah, uh, my dear counterpart, you chose to say that you agree with the desire for some people or authorities of these people to stay Nazis. I wonder what you think will this lead to? What's, what's the end game here? Because even if you flatten this country and you occupy it, you're not going to have people welcome you with flowers. So how does this end, Natalia? This is the federalization of Ukraine, which was the only possible way at the beginning of their state independence uh, to have the state stable, neutral, uh, you know, milking two cows, Russia and the West, but the West didn't want such a Ukraine at all. And if you think that if we didn't do what we now started, and there is no goal to occupy Ukraine, there is a goal of nazification, denazification, like it was with Germany. But you probably want that new war has started. Ukraine is becoming the trigger for the new uh, Third World War. And we do not want that, and especially you, you Well, you then why did you send, why, in any way why or did your another, president you send the army in? If the West didn't, didn't sponsor the, mod, the current philosophy and ideology of Ukraine, <coughs> if NATO was not approaching our borders, if the West answered our legitimate concerns with regard to our security, there wouldn't have been such a situation now. But what you're doing, what your army is doing to these people here is destroying their cities, killing their children, killing the innocent cities civilians. Are not destroyed that is a real, that yes, is a real thing. That empty. is a real thing that is happening. And I just wonder where you see this all ending, because you're going to have an Afghanistan on your doorstep. And we know what happened with the Soviet army in Afghanistan. You eventually had to leave, and that was the end of the so-called Soviet empire. So how does this end? This will end 
the same happy end as with Nazi Germany. And we will withdraw certainly from Ukraine after uh, this noble and uh, honest goal is, uh, you know, realized, etc. My final question to you, Natalia, is how does it feel? How does it feel to be the citizen of a pariah state? Uh, I think I can uh, address the same question for you, my dear. The country who supports any terrorists in uh, Chechnya, terrorists in uh, Kosovo, and even recognizing this terrorist, uh, you know, uh, center in Europe. Russian uh, army doesn't commit atrocities. Of course, it is shelling, and some people died. But war is war, of course, and it is a drama. And for me, it's also a drama, because uh, the graves of my uh, grandfather uh, lie in the Chernigov region in Ukraine. I tell you, finally, that... it may be a drama for you sitting in your study in Moscow. It's a lot more than a drama for the people getting killed on the ground in Ukraine. But I'm going to leave it you there. Know, you Natalia know, I'm a no, I'm thank a no. you very much I'm indeed. A... This interview is now over. It is now I, over. I, Thank you.